Oops, that's the six. All right. Um, we are here in uh, Miami, and um, this is Ken Fires, GGC, Miami.com, and we have a uh, welcome to our Saturday early morning uh, little uh, grace thoughts coming to you today. Hey, how you doing? Let me see, I got a... Uh, my uh, tech par uh, my tech person, my wife, Cindy, is not here today, so um, we're fumbling through this. Let's see if this works. No, nope, that ain't it. So we are going to, what we're going to do is we have a special guest here today. Um, let me see if I can flip this around. Hey, how's that? I don't know how it is, but we have a special guest. We've got Pastor Julian Tamofti. Um, he's going to be bringing the Word of God. He's with us until convention. We are so blessed. It's been a great time already since he's here. Uh, there's a woman conference in Miami today for all the women, and uh, Nutella is going to be sharing to the women. So we're going to be going out outreach, but we want to bring the word of God first. And thank you for joining us. And, uh, and I hope this blesses you and I hope this works. Um, I know you'll give me comments if it doesn't. All right. God bless you. And pastor Julian Tamofti. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm really very glad to be here. I was watching this, uh, videos on Periscope many times. And uh, I was always thinking about uh, the time here, the people here. I was thinking about uh, Pastor Ken and Cindy. And now to be here with my wife, it's, uh, it's such a privilege. And um, we are spending uh, these few days already here, going out and meeting people, being with the church. And it's, it's like really such a healing for us, such an encouragement because you know, when when you are on the mission field and um, you, you every time you meet people, new people, and then when when you come to be in the body, to be in the body of Christ, and then uh, not 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 the part that you teach or you preach, but just to be there and and to feel loved and uh, to be uh, to feel that really God is uh, is here in in the body of Christ. So I'm. Uh, I, I want to share a little bit uh, from uh, Zephaniah. Uh, Zephaniah, I hope I'm saying the right, well, the right way. Uh, in chapter 3 and verse 12, I'll read these uh, two verses here. Chapter 3 and verse 12 and verse 13, where, uh, where it says, I will also live in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. <clears throat> Father, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you will bless these few words, Lord. Also bless the outreach to, uh, to follow. And uh, give us open hearts. Give us people, Lord, who are interested people who are want to know you people who are thinking about you lord people who are thinking about the meaning of life thank you lord we pray father bless this time in jesus name amen and um i was um i was thinking about that what what does it mean in when it says here that i will live in the midst of the unafflicted and poor people and like in the in the Western world, there is um, uh, in Western Europe. God gave me the opportunity to go and to to minister to some places. And what it was interesting for me is was that that people said that we, we I, I have everything. Why I need God? And um, I was I was so sad in my heart first, but then, but then you know I went to, <coughs> to other countries like Ukraine and uh, and Moldova. And then I can I could see the people there. They were very poor, but in the same time you could sit with these people and talk to them, maybe for hours, 
and it was it was very interesting and I, I thought okay what is the difference you know these people have everything but actually have nothing and these people have nothing but they can they have everything and it was it was very interesting to um, to look at that and to see that people I like when I was in Moldova God gave me this promise and and he said that in um, in uh, in it's it's actually in uh, in James chapter two verse five, here can my beloved brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which He had promised to them that love Him, and even even we don't have things many things of this world, and if we if we look like poor, maybe I don't have. I don't know maybe I am I'm struggling for the for the bread for today but I can say something that when when I I pray to God and I I ask him and I see him answering my prayer then I understand that actually I'm the most rich person in the world and my brother is um, in Zimbabwe pastor Daniel and he said that there is over 90% of the people there they uh, they they don't have a workplace unemployment 90% of the people in the country and he he told me that there are these people in the church disciples they they sometimes don't eat one or two days just to have the money to pay for the bus to come to the Bible College on Friday and Saturday and this is you know like you you look at these people and you think oh but they are so poor no but they are so enriched because they are not trusting the things of this world, but they are trusting in God who made this world. And that's what, what God is calling us to. He's calling us to look at Him, not to look at ourselves, not to try you know, to, to make a provision for ourselves in the flesh, to make a provision for ourselves in this world. And I think the, the message, the message of the gospel it's actually uh, revealing to us how poor we are and how much we need God, how much we need to come to God and to receive from Him. And uh, when I was thinking especially about uh, Moses, that he was a prince. He was a prince in Egypt. And uh, I'm sure that he had a very good education. He, he was very well trained. But still, there was something he was looking for. Something he knew it lacks, he's lacking in his life. And you know, the, the, the result of that education was that he became a killer. He killed someone with a cold blood. And then he had to run. And for 40 years, he was in the wilderness. And now he became so poor that when, when God called him to go to, to use him, he, he was saying like, who am I? Who am I that I will go? Who am I that I, that, that I, will, I will be uh, a deliverer? Who, who am I that I will go to speak to these people? And then God was giving him this, uh, these verses um, in Exodus that, you know, like that when you go to them, you speak to them that I am is sending you. And this is this is actually what makes us rich if i have the i am if i have god and like we're saying in uh, in zephaniah that that they shall trust in the name of the lord we have an amazing god we have our god is 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 a god like in in this uh, in this uh, name i am it's it's revealed like i was thinking about five things about god first that he's the timeless one that means that he was here before I came, and he will be here after I will be gone. He is timeless. He knows all things, and you know everything. Before before I'm asking something, before I have a prayer in my heart, he already knows that, and he wants to help us. And we know in Hebrew chapter thirteen verse eight it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He he didn't change, and. When I am, when I live in this life and I trust in his name, then he is going to come to help me. He will come to, to take care of me. So he is the timeless one. Then the second one, what I was thinking about is that he is the life source. Yes, I am poor, 
I am poor, but I trust him. And I know that actually he says in, um, in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, says the thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. I come that the, the sheep might have life and they might have it more abundantly. And this is, this is our God. I am poor, but I trust him. I'm looking for him and he gives me life abundant. That means that even if I don't have anything, still I'm, I, I, have, I have a heart full of joy. Because I trust in him and I walk with him and I know that he will supply for me everything what is needed. And then the third part is that the nature and the essence of God is going to live with me. You know, I, I don't have love. But the Spirit of God brings the love of God in my heart through the Holy Spirit, right? That's what God is giving to me. And we, when we think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you, you think about a liar, you think about a passive person, and then you think about a deceiver. But what God made out of them, you know, people of faith. All, all these names are in, in Hebrew chapter 11. In all, in all these people who walk by faith with God. And you see, they are not perfect. But the nature of God was actually, uh, uh, they became partakers of the nature of God. And that's what God is giving to us. That we are poor, but actually He gives us His love. He gives us His peace. He gives us His joy. And when we believe in Him, rivers of living water shall flow out of us. And the fourth one, omnipresence that he says that Emmanuel God is with us right in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 that he is not only a man who came here and he he gave his life for us but he says here that he is wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father the prince of peace he is with us he is here in my situation and he take cares of me in everything and then the last one, he is immutable. There is no change. Nothing can change his attitude toward me. Not my sin, not my unfaithfulness, you know, nothing. But he will remain faithful toward me. He will continue to love me. And he will, he will continue to provide in any kind of situation. And he, like uh, Pastor Ken was speaking, and that he starts the work on us. He is going to finish it. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 4 I think, verse 6 and you know this is this is our God that we we poor but in him we are rich we are weak but in him we are strong that now we live this life not it's not our life but we live through Jesus Christ and Christ lives through us in this world and that's what people need to see and I, I, I just go back to that verse in Zephaniah where it says that that the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, not speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Imagine that. Imagine that. That It says that they shall feed and lie down. You know what is that? Rest. We rest in Him. And nothing, nothing shall make me afraid. I'm not looking at my situation. I'm not looking my, at my circumstances, but I look at Him because He is with me. He is the I Am. He is God Almighty and He loves us and He will care for us. And His promises are there for us all the time. And His name is there and His nature is there for us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. So. Uh, Pray for us. We'll go now to have some, uh, uh, meet some people and we'll see what God has for us. God bless you.